I'm not going to go through all the voting on everyone else. I actually wanted to talk about this for this is actually kind of a commentary on running back pay. So just follow me down this path. Because Stafford is 10, Deshaun Watson is 11, Kirk Cousins 12, and then tier three, Kyler, Carr, Goff, Russ, Tua, who while I've been down on him, that's too low for Tua, Jimmy G 18, Daniel Jones 19, Geno 20, Justin Fields, who has the variance for him has to be the most. Tannehill, 22. Mac Jones, 23. Okay. So here's why I wanted to talk about this. You want to know why Daniel Jones, who you know is barely a top 20 quarterback by this ranking, and I think that's a fair ranking. I think Daniel Jones, when you incorporate his athleticism, his arm talent, and then the flip side – the limited nature of his accuracy, the fact that if you ask him to make big-time throws, he's going to turn the ball over. He's just barely in the top 20, and I think Geno's a little underrated there, but that's fine. This is why quarterbacks are going to just take up a bigger and bigger percentage of the salary cap for the near future until we are able to have a level of competence from the below-average quarterbacks that currently do does not exist. The fact of the matter is that there are not 20 human beings alive right now who can play the quarterback position better than Daniel Jones. And Daniel Jones is barely competent at it. That Ryan Tannehill is firmly in the top 25. This Listen, I didn't take economics in high school. I'm not, or in college either. I'm not a stocks guy where you talk about mar market forces, but it doesn't, you don't have to be John Nash to understand that right now, the best thing going for good but not great quarterbacks is the fact that the cliff you fall off from the average to the incompetent is steep and sudden. And your team cannot function with the incompetent ones. Now, everyone beneath Jones isn't destined to be incompetent. You have Fields, you have Pickett, you have Purdy, you have Love. You have a lot of young guys who maybe one day will be good. But there may exist a world in 15 years where because quarterback training becomes so specialized and because seven-on-seven seven become so ubiquitous and because high school and college teams start throwing the ball more and more and more that there is a surplus of medi mediocre quarterbacks the moment that happens the nfl salary structure will turn on its head and what i mean by that is if we ever get to a place where there are 60 Ryan Tannehill, Mac Jones level quarterbacks. Then the Daniel Joneses of the world stop getting paid. Jimmy G's of the world stop. Derek Carr's stop getting paid. It's what's happened with running backs. Because there's 200 potential Isaiah Pachecos, you can't justify paying the good but not great ones, and even the great ones are having a hard time really getting paid. And so I hope this is, I'm making this clear to the audience, 
right now, when you see Justin Herbert makes $53 million a year and you're about to see Burrow make $55 million, you have to recognize though that $53 million is really only about 13 to 15 million because 40 million is the anchored cost of competence and so your if you if you don't have a quarterback on a rookie deal and you want a competent quarterback maybe you can say the anchored cost is what Carr makes so what is not what Daniel Jones makes so Car- Derek Carr what does he make 35 he got four. No, nah, he got. I mean, he got four for one fifty. Now that's it's really three for one hundred because that last year's a fifty million dollar year. So, yeah, call the anchored cost thirty five. Right now, the price to get in the room of a non rookie contract competent quarterback is thirty five million. So. Justin Herbert doesn't really cost you 53. He costs you 18. And when, and I know that sounds counterintuitive, but the only comp I can give you is, and I'm not the first person to use this example, but if you go to a fancy steakhouse and you've decided, I'm getting a steak, if the cheapest steak, is $60 and the fancy steak is $80. You're you yes you are spending $80, but if you were if you want the fancy one. But if you are dead set on getting the steak, no matter what a steak, you're spending 20 extra dollars cuz your floor was 60. And there's a logical, it's not a lot, I think maybe people, it might be a logical fallacy in some regards, but it's a, it's where you're anchored at. And if you are an NFL team and you are dead set, we are not going to, we didn't draft a quarterback and we are not going to go with one of these retreads the a guy who was a Baker Mayfield who was flamed out in other places. We want an established player. Your minimum cost is thirty five million. So when people wonder how can Herbert make fifty three, it's because if the Chargers wanted to move, is like we don't want to pay him that. They're not opening unless they draft a quarterback opening up 53 million. They're probably only opening up 18 because then they just go sign Garoppolo or Carr. And I know they were never moving on for from Herbert. The converse to that is what's happening with running backs. And I don't know the what the economic terminology for reverse anchoring would be. But when Jonathan Taylor wants call it $15 million a year. If the Colts are saying to themselves, well, we can we can't get Jonathan Taylor, but we can get 75% of his production for literally 5% of his cost for 700 grand a year via a sixth round draft pick. That then is going to work against all of these guys. So in a weird way, and I tried to talk about this last week, I just find this, I, and again, I hope the audience is interested in this, I find this type of stuff in a hard cap sport fascinating. The best thing that could happen to running backs is there to be fewer good ones. And the worst thing that could happen to quarterbacks is for there to be more competency. And I do think both of those things are coming. Because again, if we're in a logical market, you are going to have more and more of our elite young athletes specializing at quarterback. And you're going to have fewer and fewer of our elite young athletes specializing at running back. 
and the supply is going to shift. But until it does, the the quarterback piece of the pie is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and every other position is going to be squeezed a bit. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button to get more from the show, and make sure to click the bell to get notified every time new content drops. Check out full episodes of What's Right wherever you get your podcasts, or just click the link in the description below.